Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Ex Mortis, a classic Flash horror game. This is a particularly famous one that came out all the way back in 2004. <laughs> That's really scary, it made me kind of laugh. Oh, okay. You want to sneak in multiples? I see how it is. One more fun one for the road, huh? You wake up in the woods with a lump on your head. You can't remember how you got there. All you can recall are the dreams. It's late, cold, and you're unsure of where you are exactly. Fighting through the headache, you regain your focus. You see a house in the clearing and decide to shelter there. Anything is better than freezing to death in the woods. Welcome to the woods. How you doing? So, a little backstory about Ex Mortis. Uh, this is never a horror game um, that I kind of played. I don't have any memories of it. I only have one vivid memory. And I'll point out to you the scene that I do remember. It's, I think it's early on. Because I know for a fact, I think I clicked Ex Mortis, saw that scene, and then quit out. And then I never touched any of the other games in the series. Because I did not have any interest in playing Flash Horror games in 2004, let me tell you that. Alright, let's go to the house. Okay. Open the door. Things are feeling good. We're already hearing voices as we step in. Let's see. The stairs lead up to a second level? What's downstairs? The hallway leads off into the darkness. An old fan. It doesn't look like it's worked in a long time. Just another painting on the wall. It's hard for me to tell what's clickable. It's kind of just like it's a photo. What's in this room? Cellar entrance. Oh, I see. Hold up. The handle turns, but the door refuses to budge. It's almost like someone is holding it closed. That's what we're talking to me in my ear. Let's go into the darkness. I feel very comfortable there. Two doors. A dusty chandelier hangs from the ceiling. My grandfather clock sits sticking away in the corner. Hmm. Okay. Go to the right door. Because that's the right answer. An old dishwasher. Uh, anything else here? What's this? A knife. That is a very edgy knife. A bloodstained knife. You should probably arm yourself with a slightly larger weapon. Should've just taken it anyways, why not? <laughs> a griller built into the bench. Uh, a microwave. Something seems to be blood dripping out of it. Okay! A severed head. It appears to be a fresh kill. Wherever the killer is, he will probably be back soon, and I don't want to be here when he returns. Okay. This is- this is a scene I remember now. This is where I quit the game. I was like, no. No. That jump scare right there, I think I just were... I don't have vivid memory of it, but I have a specific memory of quitting the game there. A trail bud leads under the store. Alright. Blood on the floorboards. It looks like something's been dragged through here. There's nothing interesting on the coffin table. Did I say coffin table or coffee table? I feel like I had coffins in the mine. Blood stains these chairs. 
It's kind of like a shadow overlay over the uh, fireplace, I'm assuming. A tarot diary sits on the table. Oh boy. Reading. An unusually eventful day today. I stumbled across an unusual find whilst out hunting for deer in this remote wilderness. Stalking a wild steed into a clearing, you can only imagine my surprise to find a house, old and seemingly abandoned, but still standing strong. An interesting find, one that certainly has me curious. Upon my investigation with the city archives early this morning, it appears that the house has been abandoned for almost ten years, and currently resides under the control of the local government. I feel that its location must be too remote for them to be able to tear it down. But I must admit that I feel drawn back to the house, mostly out of curiosity. But I cannot deny that there was something else about that place. There's me yearning yet to return. I could not put off any longer. I called in sick to the office today, and decided that I would retrace my steps into the wilderness to once again find the house, which has been foremost in my mind of late. It didn't take much to find it again, as it was almost like I was being guided back to the exact spot that I found myself some four days ago. Once I plucked up enough courage, I pushed open the unlocked front door. Admittedly, I was very surprised at the ease which the door opened, considering that the hinge had probably built up a good ten years' worth of rust. To my relative astonishment, the place was still furnished, though very dirty and completely run down. I was and still am amazed at the state of the place, considering that it had been empty for so long. I decided that I would explore the house, and not disturb anything within. My fear had not subsided, and as a matter of fact, is still with me as I record this journal some hours later. My curiosity took me through the kitchen. Huh, kinda like me. Bedroom and the lounge room before a thumping noise from the roof from the second level startled me so much that I ran straight out the front door and back through the forest to my automobile. As it was, I almost fell off a small ledge into the thicket below. I felt like a complete fool being scared off by rats, which I assume they were, they weren't. May 29th, I had a nightmare last night. All I can remember is the blood and the frightened screams surrounding me. And the house, the house was in the mind nightmare too. I called in sick to work once again so that I could venture out to the wilderness and explore the abandoned house once more. Not surprisingly, I found the structure with relative ease as I did yesterday. However, I was startled when I noticed that the front door was closed. I am certain that I left in such a hurry the other day that the door had been left ajar. In any case, I eventually attributed the closed door to the wind, as I was clearly the only person who had been in the old house recently. I repeatedly scoured for the house for anything interesting, heading back for the previously visited rooms. Also, kind of like me. Once again, as I passed through the hallway outside the main bedroom on the second level, I heard heavy thumping coming from the roof. I was instantly very tempted to repeat yesterday's dash from the house, but I swallowed my fear and continued with exploration. Oh, this is kind of symbolic, because when you think about because I'm coming back to the game, because when I originally played it, I essentially ran from the house, right? So here I am, I'm tempted back in. It's meta, unintentionally. In the limited time that I had before dusk, unfortunately, I did not uncover anything that would help explain the mysterious disappearance of the most recent tenants. I sit here in the lounge room of the old house by the candlelight, recording in this journal the events that have transpired today. Although I am scared to within an inch of my life, I am bound to this house and I feel I do not have the strength, or... or... to resolve to run back to my car at such an advanced hour. As I have for the past week, I returned to this house of almost with the intent of uncovering anything that could help answer the question of its missing tenant. I failed to uncover anything that could help the cause. But what I did find seems far more precious and disturbing than I could ever hope for. As I was scouring the library for any misplaced photos or letters, I almost tripped myself over a leather-bound book sitting in the middle of the dusty floor. I was certainly miffed as to how I missed it in my movements through this house of the past few days. Picking up the book, I felt a slight empowerment rush through me. The distant sound of wind began to sound like whispers, and the room in which I was standing seemed to darken. I wondered what knowledge the scrap had passed down the ages for me. Enchanted by this aging literature, I retreated back into the lounge room, settled down in one of the most comfortable chairs, and continued to read for the contents of this book. Written in what seemed to be the red ink of some sort, a lot of content didn't initially make sense to me as the majority of it was written in a language as foreign to me. But in the back of the book, there was abridged translations written by Mr. Xavier Rayham from 1890. The majority of what I could understand seemed rather jumbled and nonsensical. Rather disappointed, I closed the book and relieved myself of its burden. Things from this point became rather blurred and frighteningly surreal. The sound of the distant forest animals stumped as if all life paused, waiting for my next move. The wind stopped outside, pounding against the shuttered windows, and the kennel winked out of existence, leaving me in almost pitch-black conditions. 
I'd listened closely, and all I could hear over my heartbeat and rasping breath was the whispering that I shrugged off before. It was coming from every direction, yet no direction at all. The whispering slowly got louder until it sounded like a dull roar. Voices of many different types called out. They cried in pain, screamed my name, and some shouted obscenities I dare not repeat. There were so many of them, so many voices. I felt multiple hands pin me down to the chair by my upper torso, but every time I flailed my arms out in front of me, they connected with nothing but air. The harder I was pressed against the chair, the harder it was for me to breathe, and soon I could not breathe at all. I blacked out. The last thing that I remember was a flash of my nightmare from the night before. A flash of blood, a flash of screams, a house. I woke up about twenty minutes ago slumped in the same chair. It is now long after dark, and I dare not brave the sub-zero temperatures of the woodland winter to return home this evening. Tonight, I will be staying here in this accursed house. I sometimes think that I can still hear the whispering, or they just echoes of my earlier brush of madness. I can feel the urge of a slumber rush towards me like a freight train. I pray that I survive the night. June 1st. Let's look at the timeline. June 1st. Whoops. That's annoying. May 25th, May 28th, May 29th, May 30th, May 31st, June 1st. Let's see. Interesting timeline. Plagued by nightmares more vivid than I care to remember, I woke screaming. It appears that I slept through the daylight hours, but it didn't matter to me. I was incensed to find the fight the freezing conditions outside and return home, but I was scared to move from the spot. They started whispering to me again. I want to leave, but I can't. They won't let me. I scream at them, but they just laugh and utter obscenities back at me. What have I released upon this world? I'm not sure I'll say that name quite. I'm, I'm going to make a guess. I'm going to go with Vleilu. Vleilu spoke to me today. Is he who is spoken of in the Ex Mortis title drop registered trademark? With every word he whispers into my mind, I tremble as if my soul has been shaken to its core. I have been here for over a week now. Surely someone must be looking for me by now. I pray that they find me. My captors here won't let me leave. Every door, every exit, the handles turn, but the door does not move on its hinges. June 16th, look at the time fly. I no longer fear death. I actually pray that it comes for me. June 30th. They still torment me, keeping me here, keeping me alive. They need me to, to. I can't even write of it. July 20th. I feel my sanity has almost left me. I hallucinate so vividly. I can't tell what's real and what is not anymore. The ancient shows me images of his former glory. I don't understand why they want me, why they need me. July 26th. I'm actually surprised. I'm told that they seek not to control me. They only seek my assistance in aiding the inevitable. But why do I continue to resist? What they tell me makes more sense than anything I have ever known. But I still fear them, and what they will do to me should I refuse. But at this moment, I can't think of a single reason why I should. We jump to August. Is acceptance all that I have ever yearned for? But the greater good here is far more complicated. It's so much easier to obtain. They smile upon me now. Strangely, though, I like it. I find myself basking in the warmth of their chilling promises. August 22nd. I am comfortable, and I am learning about the true nature of the world that is what is beyond it. I don't know why I continue writing in this journal. I guess that it's the last semblance of humanity that I have within me. It's ridiculous, though. I am becoming much more than human with every moment that I spend under the patient tutelage. I have been tempted to throw this journal into the fire on many occasions. Reading over its pages only reminds me of how weak I used to be. I've lost track of the day, but I'm sure that I have been here for over a year. It's been a long time now since I have entered anything into the journal. I can rejoice so. We will have company. At last, I will finally be rewarded. A group approach if to provide me with the everlasting cup of life. A day away, no more, no less, I'm told. Wrath. Death. Blood, my day has finally arrived. The ex mortis shall make the world remember what was, and I will be integral in reinstating what will be. 
I can see them now. A group of campers, as I was promised. Three males and two females. Now all I can do is wait. Wait for my time. Become their hand. Immortality beyond patience. Patience beyond the dominion. I can taste it now. Anoint me, Lord Velu. Time has come. And that's why I'm here. So, I guess we've been lured in. We're, we're a camper. We shouldn't be here at all. Alright, let's explore some of the other rooms. This was a fairly narrative game. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Locked. Okay. No. Let's go upstairs. Wandering around a cursed house at night. That's just more of like the twilight hours, but let's not get, you know, persnickety about. Moonlight streams through this window. An old oak side table. Nothing interests here. I hear you knocking. Stop it. Oh, great. What hell was that noise? There's no breeze in here. So why is this roof lamp swinging? Don't you try to jump scare me or anything. I know how you old school flash games work. How the hell did there's so much blood get on the roof? The thing on the wall is a familiar landscape. There was a safe hand behind the painting. Wow, I didn't see that coming. The gramophone is unplugged, but still rotating. How is this possible? The bed is spread is soaked in someone's blood. It may or may not be Chris's blood. Useless. Closed door. Hmm. This is an ordinary if somewhat dirty. Bathroom sink. Ooh, a key. Thank you. Don't mind if I do. The window is boarded up. Maybe I have someone who valued their privacy. Yeah, yeah, I sure they want some privacy with this stuff going on. The bathtub is filled with what seems to be blood. Or a really dark Kool-Aid. Oh, yeah. Let's go back. Were the evil voices here before? Because that's bothering me. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I, I swear, leave me alone. A severed arm. This house is turning out to be a graveyard. Huh. Well, it looks like I don't need it. I guess that's not really that handy after all. So I'll just keep that at arm's length. A shelf filled with miscellaneous books on the occult. A fireplace looks like it hasn't been used for years. A bookshelf filled with volumes of books. There's something very unnerving about this sculpture. The word remember is spilled in blood in this mirror. There's no electricity in this house, so the lamp doesn't work. Oh, I could also be the guy who got stuck here too, and maybe the camper's already dead. So let's go back in here. Oh, here we go. Hatch on the roof might lead to an attic. Probably have to go up. Maybe the blood's leaking from the top down. Yes. Because there's multiple bodies. That's why I'm like, maybe I'm the guy who like killed everybody. A torso hung up by the arms has been ripped to shreds. You wretch at the mere sight. You got any items here for me, buddy? Not just... Huh. A symbol. Seems like there's a symbol near every body. Three, four, eight, nine. Let's go back in here. Access granted. Nice. Good for you. It appears to be a human heart. A strange symbol smeared on blood in the safe wall. Never book. The Ex Mortis. Oh god, this text is small and harder to read. Okay, well, we'll try our best. The Book of Ex Mortis, what was? Before the dawn of man and beast. The earth realm was ruled by the ancients, mystical beings transcending life, death, time, and reality, as most mere mortals know it. 
The days before life and light were ruled by darkness and chaos. The ancients roamed the plane of existence and lived on the blood of con conquest and ruled over lesser entities. There were many of these ruling archaic spirits. However, one by one, over many millennia, their greed and arrogance saw them turn against each other. They sought blood, destruction, and dominance over their own kind, and many immortal sentients met their demise as a result. The consolidation of the remaining powers saw the ancients rule divided amongst the remaining three. Azrael, I think that says Kafafta, and Velu frequently exerted their wrath and cruelty through their ferocity towards each other's dominion. The blood of many was spilt as the remaining three fought against his brother for the spoils and the power that each possessed. Upon the battlefield, Azrael's forces reduced the armies of Velu to dust, culminating in a long-awaited glorious victory. But his compassion towards his defeated brother saw Velu get a reprieve from the certain destruction that he faced. Knowing that defeating Kafafta's forces would require many more millennia of fighting, Azrael appointed Velu as his general, knowing that the power of the true ancients was enough to win a disputed control. Oh, that's the word. I would like this font. In the final bloody battle in the Crimson Sky, the penultimate confrontation played out. Kafafta, not realizing that Velu was still corporal and leading Azrael's armies, made the grave mistake of underestimating the strength of his opponent. Sounds like a Diablo story. The losses took the Kafafa forces by surprise, and before they had time to regroup, Velu had plunged his sword deep in the heart of his defenses. Azrael's forces streamed into the last stronghold of Kafafta, slaying every sentient entity that stood against him. Kafafta's armies were eventually defeated, leaving Velu triumphant in his victory. His subordinates fought ferociously, and they were to be rewarded with the united, unified rule over the Earth realm. Azrael, holding the, no compassion towards Kafafta, as he had Velu destroyed the life forces of his nemesis and claimed the kingdom as his own. With his totalitarian control, he decided that Velu was no longer of use to him. Unfortunately for him, he did not count on his army's finding, siding rapper with the power of Velu. In a furious realization of this challenge in the face of Surin, I'm trying to read that last word, Ascension, I think? The Earth Realm shook with the power of Azrael's anger towards his army's treachery. Velu showed no mercy towards his brother, knowing that he could not make the same mistake that Azrael made. Without hesitation, Velu had Azrael slain by his own evil hand, and he assumed total control of the consolidated kingdom of the Earth Realm. The tyrannical rule of Velu lasted for many millennia with no one to challenge him. But conspire certain forces did against the sole remaining ancient. They bowed their time, resulting in supporters of overthrowing. Velu was ambushed and overpowered by his trusted advisors, but knowing that the only one of his own kind could destroy him, he had his corporal presence removed to exist for eternity the demonic spirit form. The remaining world of archaic lessers were dispersed and were governed under each individual's rule. It was true chaos with no joint agenda. Velu, without corporal form and no longer able to physically alter the world, roamed the earth realm for the rest of existence. Diminished in power, he still had many followers to which he would spiritually combine his life force with, instead of existing a single powerful entity, Velo becoming subserviently, subversively rather, indestructible by being many, like Legion. He called his new Legion of, oh, there it is, of existence, Ex Mortis. What is the appearance of a soul bearing creatures of flesh and blood saw in the new rule within the Earth realm? Over many thousands of years, man destroyed countless lesser entities, some very powerful, even some who helped overthrow Velo's previous rule. While man was physically weak in comparison to the entities of dark times, the souls gave them many advantages. It was due to these advantages that the Earth realm entities were reduced to minimal numbers. A world once ruled with strength and might, but was now in the hands of the weak. The handful of ancient entities sought to influence and control humanity for mutual gain. They lose ex mortis, prospered, where other entities fail purely because of their strength and numbers and the wisdom of the mighty ancient himself. Together as one, the Ex Mortis was worshipped widely in the world of man, but human I'm trying to, let's see, nature led to conflict with the cult of Velu was tragically called and almost forgotten. 
With every passing human year, Velo's influence and power in the Earth realm was diminished until all that remains was what was recorded in the written form. After the death of the final disciple, Velo and the Exmortis slept until the Dehumanity was ready for the anointment of his hand. What will be? Prophecy in the word of Velo speaks of the coming of the hand of repose. Anointed with the blood of five, which I think we're seeing around the house, a selected man will transcend humanity and evolve to become the link between Earth and Realm, Velo's Exmortis, awaking the agent from his slumber. The hand will be charged with the power to bring about the upbringing, uprising rather, of the cult of Exmortis once again. Blood, wrath, and strength will once again rule the Earth realm. Evelu will walk tall and rule amongst the immortals, as was meant to be in the time before light and life. Right of the Changing Hand. Translated from the Aramaic cult of Exmortis scrolls, the right of Changing Hand teaches as follows. Devoured the crimson life of five. Marks of Evelu given to the the mirrored below the soul survive what was, what is, and what will be. Corporal form. Okay. So I think we're the hand. I guess. And, um, we lured the campers in. They were the sacrifice. So I bet in the ending, it's either two things. We either remember, since the remember in blood, and we reject the being the one to bring him in or we do just let him in and I guess that's where X mortis 2 would maybe continue off possibly let's go left this door has no handle okay useless to me alright let's come back to the library There's gotta be something in here. Oh, here we go. Book doesn't quite fit. Ooh, quite a bit of pages. A lot of lore to this game, wow. The tale of my daughter Gwen is a sad and sorrowful fable. I refer to it as a fable, for my mortal brain could not begin to comprehend the horrors that I've witnessed in this house. So I cast what I have witnessed into my memory as delusion and morbid fantasy. My small family moved to this house of solitude last summer to escape the perils of society, and to mourn the unfortunate death of my wife, Julius. Tuberculosis claimed her life only months before my move to this place. Hindsight is a beautiful thing, and knowing what I knew now, it was a move that I would never again make. The days rolled away onward towards inevitability. My daughter and I continued our simple existence. Being a scholar myself, I enjoyed passing the time reading the literature left here by the previous owner of this detached house. Many of the fine works kept here proved to be very old and of extreme interest to me. Some works proved very challenging indeed and very hard to translate. The library provided here had abundance of books, flavored with subjects focused on the occult. One particular book caught my interest, simply titled Ex Mortis. The word is the of Ex Mortis, which Lucy translates to the dead. It was from the moment that I finished translating this book, from an unusual dialect of ancient Aramaic, mind you, and read the final English translation that our troubles here began. My daughter, the only other occupant of this house, grew distance from me over the course of the following week. She developed rageful tendencies towards my parentage, and she started having procedures which worried me immediately at the time. But these unusual events didn't limit myself to my daughter. I began having nightmares, so ghastly that I did not recall them. Suffice to say, I was concerned about the disturbing changes to both my daughter and I. After the first week, the hallucinations began. I recall hearing noises and whispering as well as sighting movement in my peripheral vision. I constantly had the feeling that the someone was in my room with me, but upon searching it was clear that I was alone. My dear Gwen, however, became less active all of a sudden. She was almost catatonic at stages, not reacting to conversation or physical prompting. She would just shuffle her petite form around the house and stare blankly through me whenever I confronted her. It was shortly after a month of this behavior that I began to notice certain physical changes in my daughter. She seemed withered in her appearance, but her face would at times seem bloated and twisted horribly. It wasn't until a fleeting moment in my day that my hope was crushed forever. My darling Gwen broke free from this new personality that she had gripped her for months. She screamed and cried for me to help her, to save her from the monsters that now plagued her body. All that I could do was hold her in my arms and assure that I would free her from the prison she was trapped in, and then she was lost forever. The Gwen that I had loved had resurfaced for only a minute but to me it was enough to realize that I had to be done. 
That night while she slept in her room, I crept in with a dagger in hand and plunged deep into her heart. She writhed in convulsion agony. All I could do was just watch and sob from the corner. In a dying breath, the real Quinn locked eyes with me and spoke. Thank you, Daddy. I sit here now recounting the events that led me to this point in my insanity. My wife and daughter taken from me over the past six months, leaving me with nothing but their memories in this house. But I fear that now I am target for the invisible force that resides within these walls. I am trapped unable to venture past the front door, or the cellar hatch to the surrounding forest. I hear voices from all around me, cursing me for my actions. I occasionally see her, my Gwen, standing in the hallway, looking straight through me like she used to. I hope that I have saved her soul, but after seeing her appreciation on a daily basis, I fear that all I have done is aided my tormentors. I now spend my days reading, researching, and translating the library. I feel that it's my purpose in this house. May God have mercy on my soul, and may death soon relieve me upon the guilt I carry. Interesting. Oh! Door is now ajar. Ghost Girl. Gwen. Which is never hallucination. Nope, never mind. Open your mind. Wake up. I feel like that's the evil talking to me. It's like pushing me through to do the ritual. The blood of Gwen Raham stains the sheets. It was over a hundred years ago that she was murdered. So how can the blood still be wet? Because every victim is remembered in this house. Is that all I can do in here? Just see a ghost? Oh, there's something more here. Symbols. Oh, and there's a symbol on the ground. I didn't see this before. Okay. Now, will you let me pass? Yes. Door slams locked behind you. Great. Oh, look, there's an axe. This part of the wall's been boarded up. Air filtration unit. Well, you have modern infrastructure down here. That's a little weird. Who installed that? <laughs> if I can imagine the demon doing it. <laughs> he called someone up like a contract. Like, hey, can you install like, an air filtration unit? We have like a lot of mold problems here. Like, oh, yeah, where you at? Oh, you know that that cursed house. Yeah, just, just get over here and get done. Come on, we have to charge an emergency fee. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'll pay you and Crest coins. Axe. You picked up the bloodstained axe. Alright. <laughs> this doesn't look quite right, but whatever. Now I'm ready. Ready for anything you throw at me. An old tunnel system stretches off into the darkness. I'm not sure if this was a smart idea. Go in the left side room? What's in here? Door is locked. Useless? Go straight ahead. Uh, hi. I guess this is the exit. It's cool. Don't mind if I do. Oh! Someone appears on the forehead. That must mean this is the fifth sacrifice. If I'm not one of the five, five campers, then who am I? It can't be. No, please no. Oh, I killed the good guy. Technically. Whoops. Small hole in the wall. Hey, a key. The open door. Okay, spooky symbols, great. Welcome 
back, child. You have served us well up until this point. Now serve us again. Become the hand of its mortals. Like the symbols in order to solve the puzzle or make a run for the forest. What was, what is, and what will be. Is there an ending branch here? Whoops. Okay, there it was. Become the hand. Mortar's cost lures many. Anarchy major cities burn. Millions die at the hands of the ex Mortar's cult. I definitely got the Hellraiser influence. I feel like that was the heaviest one. A lot of Hellraiser in this. Nope. Maybe they're upset. Right is always right. Um, what is that? What's going on? Did they catch me? You failed to escape the tunnels in time. Yeah, they dragged me away. Go. Go. And go. We're out. Free. The makeshift track winds out ahead. Hey, I mean, some innocent campers died, but at least we escaped. We'll use track that leads back to civilization. You finally return back to the world you've been kept from for so long. Oh! This end scene comes from Land of the Living Dead, though. The little pan with the little base. You wake up in the woods with a lump on your head. You can't remember how you got there. All you can recall are the dreams, or maybe their memories. You see a house in the clearing that's the shelter there. Everything is better than freezing death in the woods. It's a loop. You can't leave till you do the ritual. So I guess that's it for Ex Mortis. So, either way, it seems like it's a, a situation you cannot escape. You either get to become the hand or not. So I'm curious where the second game leads off. Maybe you're still the same character. Maybe you're a different one. Maybe the the, the cult spreading. But a surprisingly story based game. Not as jumps. It had like a lot of jump scares in the beginning. I'll okay, I'll give it that. But not really a jump scary game. Just here and there. But most of it's just walking around a creepy house with some lore. But still, back in the day, that, that would have been some pretty great atmosphere. Um, some pretty great horror. Nowadays, if you go look look back at, um, I think even compared to some of the other Flash horror games, it's slightly dated. As far as, I think, um, a little bit on the pacing end of things. Not so much the 
style and the what it actually does. I've heard Ex Mortis 2 is better, I think. And I've heard the third one is the worst of the bunch. So I'll at least play Ex Mortis 2. I look forward to that. That'll happen this month because I'm going to go for a lot of the old horror games and stuff for uh, October. But I'll debate if I'll play Ex Mortis 3. It seems like people are really... Yeah, when I looked up the reviews on that, they seemed like people really didn't like that game. So maybe I'll, I'll kind of maintain my memories and just end it at X Mortis 2. We'll see. Anyway, so thank you all for watching me play X Mortis. I'll see you guys later and take it easy.